Hey guys, it is Tyler here, back once again with another Assassin's Creed discussion video. I wanted to do something actually kind of different this week. I didn't really want to talk about Empire and the future specifically in terms of the AC franchise. It was a topic that got brought up in the last Kill Connor Club that James and I were talking about. And we're just talking about like our favourite moments and things like side missions, the Assassin Tombs, things like that. And we talked a lot about Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and I brought up of all the little things it touches on, all the little things it does, and why it's such an awesome game. And I thought, why not talk about, instead of ranking the Assassin's Creed games for you guys, just talk about why exactly, in one whole video, I think Assassin's Creed Brotherhood is the best Assassin's Creed game, or at least it's my favourite Assassin's Creed game. Obviously, it's all my opinion, and I just want to talk about what made up that game, why I enjoy it so much, why... It it's a game I can replay constantly all the time and why it's a game I've played through like 15 times already and I can do it at least once a year I want to play through the Ezio trilogy in my own time so it's that sort of game I can do that in. It's very special to me and important to me and it'll always be one of my favourite games of all time let alone my favourite Assassin's Creed game ever so I'm going to touch on all the points of why I think it's the best Assassin's Creed game. So first I want to touch on story, because it's probably the only thing I don't think it's the best Assassin's Creed game on. Its story is kind of short if you did nothing but play story missions in the game. The, the game kind of would be a bit shallow if that's all you played. You know, there's, there's only nine sequences, there's not a huge amount of assassinations, but there's some there definitely, with some interesting Templar characters from the banker, and then you've got obviously Micheletto, Cesare's personal assassin and obviously Cesare himself, Rodrigo Borgia's in there, Lucrezia Borgia, you've got some great villains throughout the story as well as all your side characters, Leonardo, Machiavelli, Bartolomeo, La Volpe, all those people, Claudia Auditore alongside Ezio, our main protagonist. It's got a good story. It's got a clear beginning where it picks up right from Assassin's Creed 2 and finishes off that kind of war with the Borgias that began in Assassin's Creed 2 and finishes that whole storyline off. It was a great ending for that revenge story, I guess, in terms of the change from, I guess, that was revenge story in Assassin's Creed 2 and became more of a out of duty and out of what was right because he's not really fighting just for revenge. Ezio at that point is a mature leader of the Assassins. I believe that Assassin's Creed 2 probably has the strongest storyline of all the Assassin's Creed games, but Brotherhood's no less weak, but it is probably not the best. Not number one, it's definitely up there to me as one of my favourite storylines, but I can see why the arguments there of Assassin's Creed 2 had a better storyline, or perhaps Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag had a stronger storyline, things like that. Now I want to talk about the things that make it the number one Assassin's Creed game to play. First of all, character. You've got Ezio Auditore, who's my favourite protagonist or character in any video game. Now, I think this is the best point of his life to play him as a character. Assassin's Creed 2 is amazing to see his origin, his beginning as a young, immature assassin, where he didn't understand certain things and it was a lot about revenge. And then you've got Ezio and Revelations, who was a bit too old, for my taste anyway. Like, I loved that game, but he was past his prime. In Brotherhood, it's like the prime of his assassin career. He's in his early 40s. He's done it all, really, as an assassin. He becomes the mentor in this game. He's got his best abilities, his best weaponry, and he's at that level where he's a leader. He has a lot of different decisions that he makes compared to what you think he would have made back in Assassin's Creed 2, where it's not all about he's got to do it just because he wants to do it or out of haste. He's patient with his decisions. He's trying to set an example for people that are older than him, people that are younger than him, people at a certain level of the assassins than him. He still sees himself as trying to do what is right and be a mature leader to the assassins overall and to teach others and to grow the assassins and save what is at that time a Templar-controlled city in Rome. I just believe at that point he was just a god in combat and the gameplay and everything complemented him as a character and being at the strongest point of his assassin's career and being in that prime. Now in terms of gameplay, it took my favourite game of gameplay Assassin's Creed 2 and then added to it. Like I loved Assassin's Creed 2, it was brilliant compared to Assassin's Creed 1. And then you just took the best bits and added to the weak bits and added new weapons, new gadgets, things like that that you could do 
and just made it better. It was just Assassin's Creed 2 on some drugs. That's what I consider the gameplay like and I thought it was just great the additions they made to it. Now I'll talk a bit more about gameplay and how that affects story and uh, all the other side stuff in a minute. But in terms of cities and settings, now Renaissance Italy is just one of the best historical settings you've got for a whole lot of reasons. I loved it so, so much. Now placing it in Rome, doing it in just one city for the first time in an Assassin's Creed game was risky and I think they pulled it off. I loved Rome. Rome felt like a character in a game. They've done it better since, but at its time it was trend setting and I loved how interactive it was. I loved the time period. I loved how it felt playing around and running around in it and its variety of, of landmarks and cityscapes to kind of countryside areas to more small towns. Like it had the variety in there while not limiting itself and it didn't feel the same all the time and it felt really natural to go around. Like I can turn off the mini map now because I played it so much and know where I am and where I'm going. It just feels like a natural game and it doesn't feel like a big cluster of shit just put into one place. It was nice and spread out and felt really easy to go around. Now side activities is where this game goes insane. It's just unbelievable the content they fit into this game and it's why this game steps it up and probably the strongest point for it. And it's why when I say, well if you just played the story and that's it and no other side missions or anything, the game could be kind of weak really. It's not that it's a bad story, it's just kind of short. But if you add the side missions, they add so many layers to the story and to the world and to the gameplay. And that goes from, you've got the Brotherhood system, where it really adds to Ezio as a character who's training assassins and you've got that whole gameplay element to train people. It helps his character, it helps the gameplay, it adds content and it's addictive and fun in my opinion. I really love training your Brotherhood of assassins and going around and doing missions and using them to assassinate targets and do cool stuff. It just felt cool as a progression to go from Assassin's Creed 2 where it's just you and for the first time in an Assassin's Creed game being like, what? I don't just have to do this. I've got these team that can help me out when I call on them. Then you've got these side missions because you're in a war with the Templars. That's what this game was branded as. You are at the center of Borgia and Templar corruption. At the time, you should feel like you're at war in more ways than just you're a badass assassin. You go and kill each individual Templar and then it all kind of fixes itself. There's way more to it. The Templars aren't just five or six powerful guys that work. They have different people involved, different groups involved, and you've got these thieves and courtesan missions where the courtesans are going after all these political high rankings to find information, to get rid of them, to destroy the little people that are a part of this whole position. You've got thieves missions where these gangs are a part of helping spread fear, which makes people go to the church, and who's in the control of the church? Well, obviously the Pope, who's Rodrigo Borgia. So you are using La Volpe's thieves to tackle these other group of thieves, and that's a whole cool storyline. You're dealing with the different layers of the war. And even better was Leonardo's machine missions, where you get to leave the city of Rome and go to these cool other locations, where it's like, well, obviously they're not just in Rome, they've got armies everywhere, and you go and use these machines to destroy different armies of the Borgias around Italy. Like, you use the tank, and you use the flying machine, and then you get to use that kind of uh, carriage uh, turret thing. you got all these different cool ones, and it helps take down Cesare's armies that aren't just in Rome, but are spread around Italy, and that just added to the whole war element. You're fighting a war here, it, it's not as simple as just your one guy against another small group of Templars. It brought the scale of this war way larger. Then you've got your assassination contracts. You've got your Templar agents, which are all your multiplayer characters and Templars there. So there's Templars all over Rome. And you've got to deal with it from the smallest Templar to the highest ranking Templar. There's so many layers to the war between the Assassins and the Templars in this game. It's ridiculous. And then if you want to just add, outside of that war, you've got great missions like the Romulus says, which are like the Assassin's Tombs. And again, that adds to it because the followers of Romulus were also funded by the Borgias, and they were another group that drove people to the church as well. So there's another element there, but it's also a fun mission where you're trying to get an armor piece while having a look at cool historical ancient locations where you get to go underground in the catacombs, things like that. They just add that mystery to the games, that fun parkour style missions. And 
in a personal level, you've got the Christina missions, which are flashbacks, and they give you the whole Assassin's Creed 2 vibe again, where you get to go to Florence and Venice for small sections, and you get to see those cities in upgraded graphics, and this whole storyline where Christina isn't just this girl who you banged at the start of Assassin's Creed 2, she meant something to Ezio, it fills in all these gaps, and how much she meant to him, and how much he cared about her to try to let her go, but then he wanted her back, like it was just added another layer to Ezio and complexity that he's not perfect and he's done stupid things and he gave up so much in his personal life to go on this revenge story to fight the Templars and it added the layer to me more than anything I don't think I've really put in this way before when I talk about it is that it showed what Ezio had to give up to be an assassin it showed what he had to give up to do what he thought was right he it showed that he was selfless Sure, he slipped up sometimes, definitely, with this Christina storyline, but he gave her up so that she could be safe, so that he could do what he needed to do at the time. And I thought it was really special, and at the end, maybe when he could have been with her was where she died, and it just, they never got their second chance. So it was just a really moving storyline, and added so much, I thought, to Ezio's story as well. So those side activities to me were what made this game, and every time I play the storyline, I also play the side activities. I can't play this game without playing side activities as well along with the storyline, because it adds to every sequence, all the layers. It adds to the game so much, and it makes it one of the longest Assassin's Creed games that's out there. And it had the shortest development cycle as well. That's insane that this game did this. It's just unbelievable how much they did with adding, obviously, the different weaponry, the horses inside the cities, this whole new city, all those side activities, plus another storyline that ended Assassin's Creed 2 story. It's just crazy. Not to mention all the economic levels that go to this game, which I thought it did best with the whole rebuilding Rome aspect to it. You got the Borgia Towers and it shows that Borgias do control this city and then you get rid of the Borgia Towers, but it's still you see all the damage that the city had caused by having the Borgia in control of each section of the city because no shops are open. They've turned it all down because all the money has to go through to them, which means businesses have closed because they can't afford that sort of thing. And the people are... Uh, starving and the city's decrepit and you don't just have to take the Templars out of it you've got to then rebuild it back up and by the end of the game you've got the whole city built you fought all these different aspects of the war and you're like Chesra you've got nothing from your smallest level guys that you pay to the most expensive I've taken them all out it's just you and me now buddy and then when you get to the end it feels like you've defeated this guy on every single level you worked your ass off for years and you pulled it off and it's believable that you could because it's Ezio. He's already been through so much to become this master assassin, the greatest assassin to ever live, and then to do all of this stuff and finish what was I felt was his duty. And that's, again, the Christina missions added to Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood were his duty of the story. That's what he felt he had to do for his father, for his uncle, for his brothers, for the assassins and for what was right, and even for himself. There's definitely a level that he felt like he had to do it for himself. And then it's in Revelations, this third game he got, that it was more of a personal journey. And it was more for for him. It wasn't really about anyone else. He Obviously it was work his father had found, finding Altair's library, but it wasn't about what was his duty to do. It was just what he felt maybe was next. He was trying to find his destiny. He'd done all these things for other people. Well, now that it's done, what am I supposed to do? What's my life's purpose? Was it worth it all? So it just, it, it was an amazing game on a million different levels and they nailed it in so many ways and I hope I didn't miss any of the things that I felt was great, but that's why I love Brotherhood so much. I could talk about it forever. It's just one of the best games of all time I've ever played. It's in my top three. It's number one of all the Assassin's Creed games for me and I'd there may be better games in the future, but obviously every Assassin's Creed game should step the game up. But I've never seen a game step it up and nail every aspect to it. In most ways. It's not a perfect game. There's no perfect game out there. But obviously someone's going to say, well, I thought this game was better, but they may have played that first. You know, obviously a game after game after game, graphics are going to get better. Different gameplay aspects are going to get better. Animations are going to get better. It's just technology gets better. But I've played them all since the first game. I've played them all as they've progressed and there's been no game better at the time 
than Brotherhood that did what it did and did it so well on so many levels. And I don't think there's a single Assassin's Creed game since then or before then that nailed all those aspects like Brotherhood did. That built its story not just around its narrative, but around its characters, side characters, villains, and side mission storylines that added to the world. I love Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Could talk about it forever. What are your favorite aspects of Brotherhood? Did you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thanks guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I will see you guys later.